Academies, we have stopped three academies and we will stop Pioneer together! Every single member of our school community, the staff, the parents, the children, we are working our asses off yeah. to make sure that we are a good school and that is what we are. We do not need an academy. Our last Ofsted report states that we are significantly improved in all areas and we continue to improve. Marston Primary School has been congratulated for its wonderful special educational needs and disability support and our nurture provision and our social and emotional learning groups. 28% of our children are on the SEND register and nearly 50% have free school meals above national average. We believe in their strengths and we support them in overcoming their difficulties. The academy chain that wants to take over now runs 11 schools. According to the latest results of those schools, all of them are worse than Molscombe at the moment. Why do we want an academy chain that has more schools that are worse than ours to come and help us? We don't. We don't want them. During the holidays and based at Molscombe Primary School, we successfully coordinate and put on a carousel of activities for local children using Namyang Martial Arts, the Forest School with Warren, Bevan Dean Gymnastics, VYD Football and Brighton Table Tennis Club. We run these activities for free. We don't draw fat salaries. We do not want or need to work for unaccountable asset strippers. It is a top-down imposed model which will divert precious resources away from all the wonderful things that happen at Morscombe School. It will create a deterioration in teachers' working conditions, an endless disruption in the name of innovation. Due to funding cuts, school budgets are squeezed year on year, and the government still wastes money on ac academy conversions, costing hundreds of thousands of pounds. The process of making it an academy will mean we have to find cuts from council services at the cost of over £200,000. School for sale! So you are buying you, have you got a school? Or your money? No. I just want to read thoughts from one of our high level teaching assistants. She lives and she grew up in the community. The school is the core of the community. It used to be a big juicy apple. Many services have been stolen from us by government cuts taking bikes out of our community. The core, which is the school, is the last piece left, and it is not up for grabs. So now he comes in with, with suitcases, they've got eight to 11 of them at our gates. The parents locked all the gates. Somebody said, I hear you said that Northerners don't back down. Well, we're from Moscow. <laughs> After three hours, he called the police. And the police came, stood there. Well, they're not doing anything wrong. They're letting the children in. They're letting the teachers and support staff in. They're just not letting you in. They also said, don't call us tomorrow because we won't turn up. After three hours, they went home in their little suitcases. So anyway, the rest of the week goes by, and then a message comes through, they're in your school. This was seven o'clock in the evening. And then another picture comes through, leaflets about the march were stuck all over his car. They then pulled up cars and parked him in, so he couldn't get out. People driving past laughing at him. I mean, who really would choose a number plate personalised with six? Six! Six! A man that pays himself more than the basic salary of the Prime Minister. More than the Director of Education for Brighton and Home. I was there on Monday with other ACOR members at 7am at the front gates of the school. What I saw was inspiring. I saw local people, ordinary people, taking power back. And I tell you what, it certainly put those fat cats right back in their place. We're a community union that uses direct action so that we, ordinary people, can take back power. Acorn is behind you every step of the way, and this is a fight that we will win. It isn't just about our school, 
It's about all the other schools out there, and I can guarantee you now, if they get ours, they're going to take yours too. Since 2019, Peacehaven and Telscombe schools have been the subject of a, of a systematic campaign by East Sussex County Council to to uh, academise. We had a massive campaign, big marches through the town. The governor's conclusion was they did not want to become an academy. Shortly after that, East Sussex County Council sacked all of the governors. They then installed them into an executive board. They don't listen. They've not recruited a head teacher. Our school desperately needs a permanent head teacher. They filled in the swimming pool with no notice. Staff turned up on the Monday and it was full of concrete. The academy don't like swimming pools because they cost money. Now they've decided they're going to push through for an academy order anyway before a consultation and then do the consultation. The University of Brighton recently announced the closure of One World Nursery. They are refusing to reopen it following the pandemic shutdown. 11 low-wage workers, 10 women and one man will lose their jobs. The nursery provision, often rated as one of the best around and recognised as having strengths in equalities and inclusive practice, regularly cited as outstanding. One World Nursery recently became a recognised nursery and sanctuary, working with refugee families amongst others. The university is destroying this sanctuary to save tiny amounts of money. Unison has balloted university-wide of a majority outcome in favour of straight action if necessary. <laughs> Visits the year we've just had. It's exposed the flaws in our education system and it's no longer possible to ignore them. During this pandemic, we've started to say that we will not accept attacks on our members, on their safety, you know, the safety of our children, the safety of our communities, and we turned around and said no. As a result of this, we've been targeted. We need a national campaign here because we are not having this. So that is what we've done and we stand and we support each other. As society begins to rebuild and recover, we've got a chance to reimagine education. Parents are telling us that what they want above all is a greater focus on mental health. They want to close the long-standing attainment gap. They want proper provision for children with SEND. They want a broader curriculum and they want adequate funding for schools. But what are we getting? We're getting an obsession with catch-up. There's a focus on discipline. And teaching to the test has become the only way for many schools to stave off Ofsted inspections and forced academisation, a picture that Moleskine knows only too well. Who's world you have to throw a better party than the people who are destroying it i think we won this morning can i just say to lee nelson um you're never going to get into school without us knowing so just go away and gavin williams just do the right thing and revoke the order because we're not going to stop and we will win again yeah! Yeah! Who's